Hello everyone, here we are back in full effect uh, on this roof. I'm starting to do the flat roof section now, as I mentioned in my last video. Um, the weather is absolutely baking. I think it's getting on to 30 degrees, so, you know, it's uh, about midday, so they say mad dogs and Englishmen go out in the midday sun, so here I am. Uh, right, so what I'm doing is basically got to put, you can see I put a rafter on the end there. Now what I've done is I've over-specced, structural engineer spec these uh, joists to go across here at six per two. And what I've done is over spec these so that instead of having to cut a fairing to go on top of them, what I've actually done is um, cut the fairing sort of out of them, if that makes sense. So I've cut, I'm putting a 1 in 64 on here. They recommend a 1 in 84, but to get that, um, they recommend a 1 in 44 because you get build up and stuff like that. But I think that was more for this sort of old historical mineral felt, as you can see how it sort of it steps up at the corner and the edges once you start lapping it up. So I think that's why, you know, historically, we like a one in 44 to end up with a one in 80, but this is having a single ply uh, membrane on it. So you don't get that sort of build up on the end. So what I've done here is split it in the middle and gone for one in, one in 60. So we're definitely gonna get a one in 84 at the end. Unfortunately, the plate um, hasn't gone on quite level. Um, and it's really important that it is level uh, here because obviously, uh, we don't want the plate kicking up which it does this end because then it's going to sort of negate my fall so what i've done rather than sort of mess about and plane the plate and you know re-bed it or try and dry bed it uh, what i've basically done is leveled across the underside of here and notched it down onto this plate and then what i've done is pulled a string line on the underside nice and tight this is a nylon line it pulls really really tight so over that sort of five and a half six meters and um, they'll be relatively tiny negligible amounts of droop in it um, uh, the plate is in at the right hand uh, it's gone into the right level this end so all I then do is put each rafter across cross um, measure down from the underside of the rafter to the line and then cut that amount off which you can see what I've done here so now when I pull those rafters in um, this will be nice and straight but also it'll be nice and level which will make sure that the fall stays the same another thing I did which I showed you in previous videos for marking out is I've marked out, we're getting two big roof windows in here, one mirroring this window, one mirroring that window. And I've leveled up, plumbed up, made my marks. And then what I did, as I showed you in the other video, it's just down there. And I can't even point to it, I can't even see it. The sun's glaring down there somewhere is a rod that I used. Took all the marks off here and then laid it on top of this steel and transferred all the marks onto here. Now then what I did is, uh, although I said this, you know, everyone knows how I feel about this steel work guy, he's a legend. Um, he did put some holes in here for me, um, but they weren't quite in the right place. So uh, I've re-drilled those out, and then what I'm gonna do to fix this is uh, I just drill up and put a screw up. And if you can see that, just screw that, and that make, make these nice and solid. And then I'll probably put some sort of solid, get my words out, I'll probably put some form of solid blocking in here again, and maybe even on here. The architects spec these on joist hangers, and I don't really want them on joist hangers, because there's no, the joist hangers sort of technically aren't bricked in. So there's actually nothing to stop this from if it wanted to sort of hiss, if it wanted to sort of twist and heave, it technically be nothing stopping it because there's no brickwork to hold the joist hangers in. So again, I've got the brick brick there to bed a plate on for me, and then I can spike the rafters down and maybe even um, truss clip them down onto, and then this uh, plate here can be then strapped down with wall straps onto the wall. So it's just going to keep it nice and solid. So I'm going to carry on put those in on. Then I've got to cut the. Uh, trimmers out uh, for these windows again you know in, in the roof here uh, then it's got to be boarded with 18 mil ply and then I've got to board up the roof a little bit then it can be membraned and then obviously insulated and then it can be flat roofed so it's burning hot as I said so in between glasses of uh, iced cold water I'm doing as best I can So uh, you can see what I've done is I've fitted those trimmers 
But what I did, uh, they're supposed to go onto a double list uh, raft, a joist, whatever you want to call it. It's supposed to be double, or to support the, the roof that's um, been cut out due to the skylight. But what I've done is uh, I've left it out so that I can screw straight through the end into the trimmer. Um, and all you also notice that I haven't nailed it. I've actually screwed it with some big 6x100 screws because I'm struggling to control the cupping. Uh, as I think I mentioned in a previous video, these uh, treated timber is, is really starting to move around. So hoping that if I screw it, uh, it might just help sort of control it a little bit, but I'm not holding my breath. It's going to do what it wants to do, unfortunately. So um, what I can do now, I've done that, uh, is I can then put these double, uh, I can put these other rafters back in to make them back up to doubles. Um, I might have to put metal work on it, I don't know, I'll check the structure of these drawings. I think, I think it's not dissimilar to the main roof, I think it was just a single trimmer on a double rafter. So yeah, I'll just get those bashed in now and then I'm going to have a bit of a break from this sun that's beating down on me. temperature says I know the van standing still let's have a look look at that what's that say there 31 degrees so that's a good 29 that's probably a little bit over these reeds slightly over but she's hot Right, I'll just show you this line. I'm just about beaten. I think um, it's mid-afternoon. It's, it's really too hot to be out in this. So, but I just thought I'd show you um, one of the things, that, uh, a really great bit of kit I've got that is realistically not even at all is these string lines. I love working to string lines. They're like, they never lie to you. If you put them nice and straight, they stay straight. I mean, I'm, this one is strung under. So as I said earlier, as long as it's pulled nice and tight, you're gonna get minimal droop on it. But what I've done here, and I'll just show you how um, I keep things straight is uh, as you can just see I put a nail under it there and I've done the same the other end and if I just get these steps you know I had to sort of mess about cutting the bottom of these rafters because the plate wasn't quite level but when you look up here look you can just see I've got that nail width so it's always important when using a line that you you put a nail under it I know that um, lots of you guys will know this but if you don't put a nail under it one of these could push the line down and then your line's not accurate where um, all of these uh, joists now are within a nail's width of each other, which to me is perfectly acceptable tolerance, bearing in mind I think this um, treated timber is going to shrink like mad. So, you know, we can toil to get it within the nearest millimetre, come back two days later and it's shrunk five mil, so. But there we go, I'm, uh, I'm calling it a day today, so I'm quite pleased with that. And let's just have a quick look up there, let's see what that plane's like. Uh, hopefully it should be a nice flat oh yeah look i don't think you just see that we get it down there nice flat plane there we've got a one in 60 slope so what i'll do when i come in next is deck it with 18 mil and um, ply um and then we've got to return that uh, ply up the roof a little bit and then the ply will oversail to the outside face of the brickwork then the 
the curb will go on the end of that, which will be the same as the insulation, which I think is 125 mil. And then it will be uh, rubber roofed. Um, sorry, one massive thing I've got to do, <laughs> of course. Uh, I've got to build these curbs up here. So we need 150 mil upstand above the um, insulation. So that's what I'll do tomorrow. I'll deck it, then I'll build those curbs, put the curb along the end, and that'll be ready for the guy to come and put the rubber roofing on. So from a very you know, hot and sweaty site, thanks for watching.